Fractional CMOs and the 90 day win. Hi, welcome to the second season. Uh, this season, we're going to walk through scenarios that companies and these CMOs experience, uh, share lessons learned, and tips on how to get the most out of a fractional CMO that you've hired. So, hi, Eric. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Eric, so uh, the sort of you know conceit of the podcast is we you've just started a hypothetical one year engagement, okay? Fractional CMO engagement. Um, what is the first problem? that most of your clients need to start fixing in your experience? Uh, or what problem do you tend to go hunting for? Because you know it's there. And uh, in advance of that, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, my name is Eric Blankenship. Uh, my career has been uh, in sports, entertainment, live events for the better part of 20 plus years. Uh, sure. All in marketing. That's all I've ever done. Obviously, in the industry, you kind of, you know, branch out into other disciplines, but marketing has been my focus. And uh, about three years ago, uh, for a variety of reasons, I decided to step out on my own and kind of do my own thing. And that's uh, what kind of brought me to this point today. All right. And what big problem do you go hunting for first? Oh, wow. Um, it's interesting because a lot of clients think they have the problem that they need solved. In many cases, that, that's accurate. Right. But in some cases, there's other problems that they don't see. And in, um, and many times, I have to kind of take a step or two back. And then we address some of those other issues before we can take a, step, a couple steps forwards. For example, um, I had someone that wanted to do Facebook advertising. They were gung-ho. They're ready to go. They want to start driving business Facebook advertising, which is great. Yeah. And for their business, it was going to work. But their website was terrible. So we needed to fix the website first. Okay. Yeah, I tell clients that's the intersection problem. I, I spent a long time as a project manager for um, big software companies. And uh, I'd explain that like all these things have to arrive at the intersection at the, at the same time or else it's a wasteful or something you know, breaks. And so we really need to think through like what's going to be done first. And so, you know, before you do that, you need to make sure that that's in place. And before you do that, you need to make sure that's in place. Right. And there's, otherwise there's no point. You, you break the system. I forget the name of the book. The goal was it who wrote that book about systems and constraints way back in the day. Right. It's like, there's no point fixing one thing if it's just going to break the next thing down the line. Yes. So true. Yeah. So, uh, Elon, hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, okay, so uh, same question, actually, in this case. Um, what's the first problem that you, you know, in a hypothetical one-year engagement, what's the first problem you'd go hunting for or that you typically find your clients have? And uh, tell everyone a little bit about you. Sure. So typically the first area of focus is actually that word focus. That is the first problem that I am come and help identify and eliminate the let's go go everywhere get everybody and convert everyone it's mostly a icp audience focus and what i take the companies i work with on is a change journey around quality first quantity later because that's the challenge that a lot of time they're facing they have scaled to some degree or have done good work to some degree on a specific motion but not truly scaling effectively, which is the current norm and the new playbook that we need all to do, to do right. is challenging unless you go back to what is quality, understand that, build a repeatable foundation on motion, and then scale it. And that is also who I am. I focus on coming to companies for a specific amount of time. Usually it's a one-year engagement. That is why sweet spot building that motion as the fractional, temporary, whatever word the jour you want to use, leader of this function, go to market or marketing function, finding my replacement while I'm there and then staying on as an advisor. I've been doing this for quite a long time. Um, and I got to this because I saw that doing this for startups as a full-time CMO or VP marketing or leader, whatever right. term you want to call it, is not needed. You don't need me for five days a week. You need me for probably two, three days a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. And then you need a very strong execution muscle. So that was helped me create my practice. All right. Sounds good. Oh, by the way, um, I should I should mention here, like um, sometimes people already know a word. And so like this happens a lot. And so um, they'll sort of impose one word on another. 
And so in my in my case, for instance, a lot of people will pronounce my last name as Wayne, even though there's no N in it because <laughs> they knew Wayne long before they knew it. So it occurred to me just now that I pronounced your your name Elon because of the very famous video game character whose name is Elon. But I didn't ask you, and I really should have. So am I how, how do you pronounce your first name? So the the the, the appropriate terminology of how to pronounce it is Alon. It's an L game, you. long R. But hey, I go with everything. I've lived everywhere in the world. Of everywhere, I've been butchered my name for ages. So it's all good. It's it's, it's really fun. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that comment. I tell people that they shouldn't feel bad about getting my name wrong, and I remind them that there is one organization that uh, I guess because they're so sort of warm and people oriented. One organization has literally never gotten my name wrong. Uh, it's the IRS, and uh, <laughs> they never misspell it. Their letters <laughs> arrive. They get their money. So like very people oriented, the IRS. And so they're very careful about people's names. I appreciate that. Cool. Uh, so, so Elad, how about this? Um, okay. Uh, besides sharing information with you, which is, you know, what the company and especially the CEO should do as you're getting started, right? Besides doing that and, and like giving you access, what should a CEO do to get maximum value you think out of a fractional CMO? It's all so in order, No, that's a good one. So in order to address that, that's first of all, determine what, Type yeah. fractional CMO. This term mm -hmm. is really used a lot now. And that's good. I'm happy that there's a lot of people looking for part-time uh, related work. For me, for me, as I mentioned earlier, I do very specific coming in to lead the function, get it to the next phase, and then step back. Not as I'm coming to date before I marry, not as I'm out of a job and I just need a few months consulting turnkey project. That's not the job. I'm coming in as that. So the, in order for the CEO, I think that was your question, to sh what, what should the leader of the company yeah, share to get, value. Uh, to get value from us? Uh, share the truth. Tell me and, or somebody you want to come and say, it's my first time here, or I really know the sales motion well but I really have no idea what marketing contribution is. Or my marketing team is coming and telling me that we're doing great, but I can't tie it back to the number. Um, or tell me that I really want to double everything, but I really want to understand from you, somebody who's been around your failing or success, successing at something of our stage, can we double? My, my recommendation to a leader that's coming to somebody like myself, there's a reason you're coming to me. Either your board refers to you, that there's something that's not working or you don't know what's not working is open up the data, open up the transparency and come use us as people are going to help you to get to the next stage because we've been there. People that have experience in being marketing leaders of different stages and different spaces and all of us also focus like I do on CX, Martech and sales tech is we know from experience, what the baseline should be, or like saying that, oh yeah, my marketing team is telling us we have contributed 95% of all pipeline, but then sales is saying they did 60% out oh, there. Like, we know what the problem is very quickly. It can help you accelerate to that. So share the information, be transparent, and don't come and say, oh, I don't know if I need you or not. Like, be honest about the problem. That's where I would start. And I know we can go around this a few more rounds. No, that's good. And then Eric, what do you think? Besides sort of sharing information, how else? Does yeah, so I was going to say, not to spend time on it, but the truth will set you free, right? Yeah. I mean, I think being sure. honest and truthful and authentic is very important. But in addition to that, you know, one of the things that I often want, and in some cases I get, <laughs> is, is in a you know. normal role, your CMO is someone that is very much a part of the organization. They have their pulse on the organization. They're integrated right. in the many, many different departments. As a fractional CMO, that connection doesn't exist. So I think one of the things that I ask for, especially at the beginning of the relationship, is I want to be integrated and included into as many different organizational functions as possible. So if I can be a fly on a wall in a meeting, if I can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with certain department heads, whatever I can do to get a pulse of the organization, to get a feel for what the culture is like, that will help me integrate more with the overall team 
And that will allow me to kind of blend a little bit more seamlessly in and not be someone that is disconnected from the organization. Because once again, I need people uh, to be able to do my job. I need other people. So having that sense of trust, again, is important. And being part of the organization as much as you can is important. So, um, Eric, let's stick with this for a second. So uh, if you were going to pass along some advice to other fractional CMOs, okay, and they're walking into a company where there's already a marketing team, maybe just like junior and mid people, mid level yep. people, but like they're walking into a team and, you know, they're the fractional CMO, not necessarily the manager, right? Sometimes, sometimes not. What advice would you give uh, someone who said, hey, Eric, like, you know, I just got a, a, a year long fractional CMO gig. There's already a team there. Like, you know, any, any heads up you could give me. Yeah. Uh, I, uh- Repeating a little bit, I think, especially as a fractional CMO, you need your team to be successful. And if that's a a team that's already in place, fantastic, but you're going to need them. Um, So I think, again, gaining their trust is going to be paramount because, again, even if you were a normal CMO and you were putting in your 40, 50, 60 hours a week, you still need the team. So now you're a fractional CMO putting in 10, 20, 30 you need them more than ever. So I, I think whatever you can do to gain their trust, to know that you're there to grow them, to mentor them, to coach them, to make them even better and stronger, I think is going to be extremely important. In addition to that, and very much related to that, uh, there's going to be other leaders in that organization. As a fractional CMO, you're right. already someone on the outside. You yeah. have to find a way whether it's in-person, if you're able to do that. I always value in-person connection way more than a phone call or a text or an email or a Zoom call. But whatever you can do to get the other department heads, the other leaders in the organization to be part of your process because you need their buy-in, you need their support. And the reality is they're all going to be talking amongst each other They're going to be talking with the CEO or whomever you report to. So it's going to be important that you have their support during this entire process as well. And Alan, how about you? Someone comes to you and says, hey, I just signed a contract. It's going to be X number of hours or days per week, but they've got a team in place. Like, how should I approach this? I would start with, first of all, questioning. Is this a temporary fractional job? Why is it? If there's a team in place and you're coming in as a leader, why is the company not hiring a full-time VP marketing or CMO? Well, in my case, that happens all the time because I come in to replace. I come in for a very short period of time. I am the leader of the team. Therefore, the CMO title does exist. And relationship and, and everything Eric said is critical to build it, get the motion started, and I don't waste time. I run, 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 and try to minimize the amount of over managing the team, which is the one or two days that I cannot be with them, which is not what they need sometime over time. So it's very important to have this leaders be the managers of people and you are the guidance, strategy, plan, and, and leader of the function internally only and to the executive. Don't be the external. You're not the face of the company. That's not what they hire you for. So first of all, so again, so first of all, is why did you as a part-time versus full-time? If the goal is to have a full-time leader of the function, then you're just there for a period of time to perhaps set it right and help them hire the person. Then I would say the relationship building with the team is important, but not the number one function. Number one is, guys, I'm here to help you. I'm empowering you. I'm setting you for success. You are the face of marketing internally. And in three, six months, 12 months, because I'm temporary, let's empower you and them to be successful together. But you're there for the company, not there for the team. The company hired you because there's a problem. The company asked you to come in versus a full-time VP because there's time to market. Um, Boys in the world today around how luxurious (laughs) and great being a fractional is. It's actually very difficult because you're coming in always in a turbulent time other than there was a not great exit of the prior CMO. They've never had a CMO. They don't know what they're looking for. They have a team that they don't know how to measure success. Like you're coming in not as an executive that has the time to build a plan, learn the team, relationship and all that. There could be instances that's a date before you marry style. If you're coming in truly for part-time and interim, 
then the accelerator and the quick focus on getting success of the function is the critical one. And, and I always mandate there will be a team day because I'm not going to come and execute. It's not a fractional CMO for me. That's a consultant. Okay. So it's important to build that relationship, as Eric said, to empower these folks future wise and understand hey, guys, I'm here not to be your manager for long term. I'm here to empower, give you tools, set foundation and measurement of success criteria so that the function can either go back to being well appreciated or first time be well appreciated. Well, let's flip it around then. All right. This same scenario, but you're the full time employee working on a marketing team and the company is brought in a fractional CMO. Like what changes can you expect to see in your job, if any? First of all, direction and strategy, because this person comes in for a yeah. reason. There's a few scenarios why people hire people like us. One is I cannot afford a full time CMO of our experience. Bring us in. Right. Okay. So that employee for that reason, for that scenario, this employee should relish from the fact that they can get a mentor that is probably more experienced and also checks their ego at the door because it's not about me and my brand being on the on the picture of everything around the company. It's about empowering the company and setting it right. So an employee should be, especially if it's a direct report to me for short term, encouraged that they're going to get a mentor, somebody to guide them, to elevate them. It's not about me coming in to build my brand. It's about me coming in to help the company and help the team elevate. That's one. The second scenario is if I'm coming in truly as the leader of the company for non-defined time until we decide on the next step, then they should see it as they have somebody that's going to be there, going to nurture, going to build the function, has done it before, can learn. I am their friend. Like An employee that does not use the benefit of a fractional versus a full-time is probably missing out because most of the time a fractional CMO, when, when they do the job right, in my opinion, is not about themselves, but it's about the company. We take equity many times. We want it to succeed. Yeah. Uh, but there will be deep scrutiny of every member. So they should really be able to tell the story of success, of what they do to drive impact to the business outcomes that they find. So that's up to you're everybody not there listening. Long to. Enough. Right. You're not there for like a long enough time uh, or per week or enough runway to bother with politics a lot of the time, right? Or to make yourself Correct. look good at the team's expense. So, Eric, what do focus, you think? Focus, you're the, the, you're numbers, the FTE. Actually. Yeah. Eric, you're the FTE. Someone just hired a fractional CMO. Like, you know, what do, what do you expect to, if any, what, what changes do you think are going to happen in your job or how you work? So it's, it's interesting. So I, I've been in that situation before. It was many years ago. So mm -hmm. I, I still kind of remember some, some of it. And you know what? It, my take was this. Here's an opportunity for me to shine in front of someone brand new. Because I always thought, you know what? Yeah, this person might be here temporarily. He might only be here three or six months. But what if he isn't? What if he's here three years, six years? Mm -hmm. So if I had an opportunity to really stand up and set myself apart in front of somebody, I think there's at least two scenarios that can happen. One, that person stays there. And now I was someone that immediately stepped up um, and put myself at the forefront and being that star employee, for example, or that person goes off somewhere else and that person remembers me for some other opportunity, right? So right. that's the way yeah. I would look at it. And, and to be fair, I think I've always looked at it that way, whether it was a fractional person or not, uh, especially in my industry where, you know, if you're willing to move, you you can grow a lot faster. So there was always a lot of movement, especially at the top. So then, um, so, all right. We've covered a few topics. We've sort of like come around this topic, but we haven't actually covered it. So um, we'll sort of finish out the podcast uh, this way for both of you. Uh, okay. So do you think, because I've I'm, I'm, I'm been sort of listening to, uh, especially what you guys have talked about for like, you know, an amount of engagement per week or per month and then how long, for instance, in different like lengths of time. Like, is a fractional engagement better when it's a marathon or a sprint? Like, do you think these engagements should have, or do you prefer that your engagements have sort of defined end dates. And so you can, you know, run to that end date, you know, like push hard. 
uh, or should it be like an ongoing marathon kind of thing where it's, it's it might like last for quite a long time, like part time? That, wow, that's a good question. Um, so I'm going to answer it with a, a couple different answers. Right. In theory, I would like to have an ongoing client where I continue to learn and grow and adapt and evolve and find new ways to, to be successful. Um, part of that reason is also, and I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's like this with anyone else, but I feel like half my time is business development for myself. Yes. It's, it's, you know, finding that next client. Um, and I'm not saying I dislike that, but it's half my time. Mm -hmm. What I enjoy is marketing. So if I had clients where there was, more of a longer runway that allows me to do more of what I enjoy more, if that makes sense. Now, on the other side, um, I have found when I have had, uh, you know, clients and contracts that there was a definitive beginning and end. The good news is, is that now I kind of have a good idea of what I can and can't do within that time period. So I'm right. not going to put in any programs or initiatives or systems that are going to take a year to fully realize the benefit if I only have three months. Right. Right. So it, it, it does provide more clarity. So it, it's not a great answer, but it's kind of, <laughs> you know, um, it kind of depends. Honestly, it just depends. Now, again, if it was up to me, if, if you put, you know, put me on the spot and said, pick one, I'd rather have a client that I have a longer relationship with, one that I can continue to grow and nurture with. And Alan, what do you think? I need to divide this. In, I need to divide it into two different scenarios again. This first okay. scenario is truly acting as the interim fractional part-time leader of the function, manager of the team, doing all the design, building it, interviewing. And being in interlocks, meeting with all the like, that is a true CMO as a part-time function, but leading it. For that, I am a believer in the short term and not long term, because I focus mm -hmm. on companies that are not too early. There's always a team in place and growing. Sometimes it's a team of 5, 10, 20 people. Today. And for that, over time, you will need a leader that is full-time dedicated and 100% into the company, because it's it's just the managerial and the amount of time that you need to spend with peers at all levels, uh, skip level and executive level. So I see it as a one year engagement usually where, where at the year, there's already my replacement being transitioning in and taking over. And then I, then the scenario two is becoming an advisor, which means I don't manage the team, but I stay on there to advise the executive team to advise maybe right. the ABM function, the dimension function, the customer marketing function, the, the the, the awareness function it really depends on the team and, and of course, the leadership. And that's hours versus days a week. But I don't have managerial duty. I'm an executive member of the team. I don't have to go to every meeting. And I'm there to help them with guidance, strategy, frameworks, and the things that I really know well. But I'm not the CMO de facto. Right. That is, can be a way longer. And I have a few of those that for years already. Long, a way longer engagement or maybe a forever engagement sometimes if it's equity based as well. So I have to differentiate between those two, but I am firmly for, for what I do as I've explained in, in, in the prior questions is short term is more beneficial and it's a phased approach towards building the next phase of the company. All right. Well, that's everything for today. Uh, Alan, thanks very much. And, and Eric as well. Um, Alan, uh, how should people get in touch with you and who? should get in touch with you. I'm always happy to talk to anybody. So if, if you need help or if you want to just understand about your career or mentorship, whatever, just hit me up on LinkedIn. That's probably the best way to get. Okay. And Eric, who should contact you and how should they do it? Very similar. I enjoy talking to all kinds of different people, whether they need a fractional CMO or, hey, they just need some guidance on, you know, how to get into sports, for example, you know, really anything, you know, you can absolutely reach out to me. I'm on Twitter at eBlankenship. 
I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm very easy to find, but absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to talk to anyone at any time. And if I can ever be of service to anyone, uh, that's why I, what I enjoy doing. All right, guys. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks everyone for watching Thank you. and we'll see you in the next episode.